Up to now, I have uh, chosen um, as my soldier iron of choice a mains voltage, so that's uh, UK Europe is 230 volts, 25 watts soldier iron by a company called Antex. And this is the XS25. And I really like this iron. Um, I've just used these for a long time. I generally have one lying around spare um, and a few bits and a spare heating element. Um, they're just very good irons. And their high power output makes them just very good for mass production of circuit boards. But the one thing that niggles me, particularly in this day and age of cheap imported irons, is the fact that the bits can sometimes burn out quite quickly. Um, and they're expensive. They, they seem to vary between about £5 to any upper limit. Uh, the, the, you know, I've seen people selling these for £10, which I just think is ridiculous for a consumable soldier iron bit. And even Maplin, uh, they don't sell you individual bits, uh, I don't think they do. Um, the only ones I've seen are packs of multi-different types of bits. Um, and the size I prefer, which is around about three three millimeter chisel tip, is always out of stock at Maplin. And besides, you you have to pay fifteen pounds for three of them, and that's made me look at maybe trying out um, the cheap imported irons. Now this one came with a soldering station. It's it's the low voltage iron with the thermal feedback, and it came with that Yehua soldering station that also has the hot air gun. The soldering station is quite interesting, mainly because it makes a really strong smell of hot transformer when it's in use, which isn't actually that great. But anyway, what really matters is that you can buy these irons, these generic irons, for just about £4, which is about $6 on eBay uh, uh, from China, complete with the uh, elements and the tip and everything. And the they appear to be based on, a, is it... Hako or something like that, a, an existing brand of uh, professional soldering station, with the difference being that the Hako has a five pin connector, a plug, and these ones have a five uh, receptacle socket. But the construction of these is very interesting, mainly because they've, they've got these uh, easily replaceable um, ceramic heating elements, and interestingly, because the bits are really short, the bit caps over it like that, uh, only the tip of the heating element heats. It's rated 50 watts, 50 watts packed into this last 25 millimetres, this last inch of the heating element, with a thermocouple for feedback. And um, I found that out because I thought it would be quite wasteful heating the whole element from the way it's constructed, so I put it in a low voltage supply and I pointed a thermal imaging camera at it as one does, and you could clearly see it was just the tip that was heating up. So. Getting to the construction of this, it comes with spare bits. The, this, the soldering station came with a spare heater for the heat gun and also two spare uh, heating elements for the iron. I don't know if that means they fail quite quickly. But there's a little locking collet that comes off. So that comes off. And then this outer sleeve. And then the bit revealing the heating element underneath and this fixed sleeve. And then this unscrews. And there's a spring here which has the dual function of holding the circuit board in place inside and also it earths the uh, metal tip. It's the grounding for anti static purposes. So if I push this out now, the heating element, the, end, the circuit board inside that acts as a sort of just terminal block effectively um, is interesting because it's also got the function of the cable strain relief and hold supporting the, the heating element. So the heating element has a little couple of little notches in it and they sit into a notch, matching notch in the end of the circuit board and then the other end there's this metal crimp which crimps onto the cable sleeve and then crimps onto a suitable sh shaped section in the circuit board. So that's quite clever, quite like that. There are four short tracks on here uh, double-sided and everything's kind of geared up so you can solder the connections onto one side and then if you solder them onto the opposite side through the circuit board it means that it's less likely to make the wires pop off the back while you're soldering on. So there are four connections. The two at the end <coughs> are the heating element and they're connected to, and I don't know if this is a standard colour code they use or not, but the red and yellow that are coming from the cable 
connect to the heating element and polarity doesn't matter because it is just a resistive element. However, the other two at the bottom here, white and green that come from the cable, they connect on to the thermocouple and the white connects on to the red of the thermocouple and the green connects on to the blue of the thermocouple and that polarity is important. But it's neat. Um, this uh, slips into the housing like this and there's a little slot to make it line up. I'm guessing that the reason these are so cheap is because Chinese factories use tons of them themselves. So the heat element sits in like that. This goes back on. Nice construction. I like this. It's very simple. You choose your bit and these bits, you can buy a soldering iron bit, any type, because they do about 10 or so different shapes, um, including the three millimeter chisel that I favor. And these uh, are available for a pound each, including shipping from China. Or you can get packs of 10 for something like five pounds with 10 different tips, which is ridiculous when you consider, you know, how much it costs for the, the traditional Antexy style bits. So this goes on here. It's just loose fit. It's just radiant coupling, I'm guessing. Uh, then this cover goes on, and it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, so it physically grips the top of the, el the bit round its uh, collar, and then it drags it down onto the um, shaft, locking it firmly in place and making it very rigid. It's a very neat design. I quite like this. Um, this one probably shouldn't be this colour. I was playing about the calibration and turned it in the wrong direction. And while I was distracted, the tip ended up glowing red hot, visibly glowing like a radiant ring, uh, which was very impressive. It didn't seem to do any harm, though. Um, but yeah, neat. I uh, quite like these. Uh, I'm going to give it a go, but uh, right at the moment, as I say, the, my main issue is the fact that the base unit actually makes a strong smell like hot transformer when it's on, which I'm not overly comfortable about at the moment. But uh, yeah, I'll be giving this a test in due course. I've, I've already ordered my favourite bit because uh, the two tips that came with it are sharp needle tips, which isn't really one that I'd normally feel comfortable using. I prefer the, the flat bit. But there you go. Uh, neat little irons.